Hello viewers and welcome to Sahara TV, reaching you live from New York City. Today is April the 20th, 2013, and my name is Omoyele Shore. As we have promoted and previewed to you earlier, we have two gentlemen in the house today who came all the way from the UK, London, and Nigeria to talk about some of the most burning issues in Nigeria's history. As you all, have, all, well, all well know, uh, General Olusegun Obasanjo, who is now referred to as Chief Olusegun Obasanjo, was the president of Nigeria between 1999 and the year 2007. He was forced out of power as he planned to elongate his tenure in office uh, through a controversial process of trying to re-engineer the Nigerian constitution to remain in power in what is now known as the Totem uh, Scandal. We have two gentlemen in the house today who were in the background who saw a lot of what happened on, uh, under the Obasanjo regime. Uh, they said they witnessed corruption, political assassinations, electoral manipulations, blackmail, and a lot of cover-up uh, during that period. And they have now agreed to come forward to talk about their experience. So we'd like to tell you that this is actually a world-exclusive interview, and we hope that you will get your seat listen and watch what these men have to say about what they witnessed between 1999 and 2007, the period in Nigeria's history that changed the political destiny of Nigeria in the way it is today. So I have with me in the studio, uh, to my immediate right, uh, Richard Odusonya, who is now a social crusader and is the chairman of a new organization known as Leadership Rescue Initiative. He was a, a resource person, that's how he likes to describe himself, uh, at the highest level of government in Nigeria at various times. Now he calls himself an estranged associate of former Otumba Uyewale Fashawe. You guys must have heard about uh, Ms. Fashawe, who, you, who erected a big signboard in Owo, his hometown in State, referring to himself as a friend of the president. Uh, he later fell out with Chief Obasanjo. And um, this man said they were extremely involved in the workings of uh, that regime. Uh, but most importantly, when they fell out, they were part of the people who helped defeat Totem using their internal knowledge of the workings of uh, uh, that period. Also, to the extreme uh, right, here is uh, Prince Shegun Seriki. He's a member, former member of the National Public, he was former member of the National, Pop no, sorry, he was former member of the National Center Party of Nigeria NCPN. He was National Publicity Secretary at that time. And he was one of the founding members of the People's Democratic Party, uh, the largest party in Africa as it is today known. Uh, he's also a public affairs analyst and director general of the Leadership Rescue Initiative. He studied industrial chemistry at the University of FIFA, OAU, as it is known today. Uh, he was a member of the Federal House of Rep during the Third Republic. He actually was a young, one of the youngest at that time. And as a concerned Nigerian, he also took part in the fight against Third Time. So welcome, gentlemen, to Sahara TV. Thank you very much. Yes. Let me ask you, uh, Mr. Richard, uh, how did you come to meet Chief Olusegun Obasanjo? You know, I mean, we hate to use the word chief to describe characters like this, but that's how he's addressed in Nigeria. Uh, how did you come to know him? Thank you. Uh, let me start by saying, or oh, using a scriptural uh, background. I like to say that once I was blind, now I can see. Uh, sometime in the early days of the uh, 1999, February precisely, uh, about the first week of the month of February, uh, uh, an associate of mine and a friend and a brother, Femi Falano, although not the not, lawyer. Not, not the, the lawyer. human rights activist Femi Falano. Uh, he was an activist too. Yeah, okay. He but was at the, various times. Yeah. U, uh, in UI, uh, uh, he was the president of U, uh, the union in UI. At, at, at the University of the uh, Yes, at some time. Yes. Uh, I met him shortly before the Jaws convention. And I remember vividly um, 
he then introduced Otumba Fashawe and I, mm. and directed that I had to work with him. Of course, um, that was the genesis. And thereafter, as a man who respects institution, I worked all through the government behind the scene with Otumba Fashawe. So you work with Otumba Fashawe, yes. and you work in what can be described an, as an in, within an extraterrestrial capacity, yeah, which was not directly that you were, you know, uh, appointed into government. And in this process, you told me, and I wanted to repeat to our viewers that yes. you were were housed in Abuja at the Defense House. Yeah. Uh, how how did that become possible? Because well, that is an official residence of, uh, of government officials. And you are not directly government officials, but you were, you were housed by President Obasanjo at the Defense House. Well, I need to explain this. Okay. The Defense House happens to be the official residence of the Defense Minister. Mm. But at some point, particularly during the government of General Abata, there was no Defense Minister. Mm. So she, uh, then, I mean, President Olusegun Obasanjo then was the defense minister. No, I will explain this. Okay, there was no defense minister, and the residence of the defense minister then became the president. I mean, the head of state's special guest house, well fortified. I mean, it's an annex of the villa. Um, the subsequent government also uh, continued like, like that. Then Ambassador came in and uh, was the Defense Minister, Lieutenant General T.Y. Danjuma. Mm. He obviously didn't want to stay there because he has a reasonable like, accommodation. And of course, I think he's a man who has his uh, own mind. He rejected the official residence and stayed in his private house. So therefore, it continued to be the president guest house. And therefore, the president has a prerogative to so allow uh, the usage of defense house for a very important assignment. Or Tumba Fasha where, as we all know, happens to be a key actor. Let me use that line. Let, let me quickly line. ask you, how long were you warehoused at the Defense House before well, Fasha were fell out with uh, 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 I, will expl I will explain that too. Okay. It was slightly over four years. Mm. But before then, for known reason, some that will be revealed today, I was not ready to continue, so I moved out. I actually was residing there. Mm. I moved out. How, how many of you were resident at the Defense House? Uh, well, we have guest of President Obasanjo. Yes, we have uh, Chief Tunde Oshunri, mm -hmm. Otumba Fashawe, myself, John Dara, who happens to be SA to the Minister of Defense. Mm. I think those are the four key. How people. big was the Defense House? Oh, it, I mean. It, it's, a, it's a palatable it's a mansion. Palatial. Oh, Palatia, sorry. Palatia yeah. mansion. Yeah. So let's go directly into some of the things that happened within that period, of which you were privy. By 2001, uh, something happened, December 23rd, 2001. And that was the death of, the yeah. killing, assassination, and murder of the Minister of Defense. Oh, the, the Attorney General. Attorney General. I'm mean, sorry, the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice, Justice yeah. apologized, and that was Chief Bola again. He was murdered in his house in Ibadan. Previously, before we came on this show, you said you actually met Chief Bola again a few weeks before then. You were sent to meet him uh, by Chief, I mean, President Lushe Mobasanja at that time. What was the mission? Uh, what was your mission to Bola again? Thank you, uh, I like to say that 
I was not just sent to meet him. I was on an errand, a regular one. In fact, that was not the first time. Before he became Attorney General, he was first the Minister of Power and Steel. At various times, at his residence, at the Minister's quarters, I used to uh, I am I, 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 I used to go there on errand. I mean, sometimes uh, I go there with gift of money to I, chief Bola to chief Ige. Hmm. And when he became Attorney General, he also he also moved his residence. I mean, his residence was moved to Asokoro. And I remember vividly my last encounter with Chief Ige. Um, I cannot remember precisely uh, what time uh, difference, I mean, what time lag it's to, to his assassination, but I believe and remember vividly that I took 50 million cash to him. Naira dollars? Naira. Okay. And where did the money come from? Well, I, we have a source. We have a source. So you, 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 this, this money came from that source? Yeah, Just describe briefly, source. what was the source? Was it a slush well, fund? I, I won't call it slush fund, but there is a, a dedicated account. Hmm. A dedicated account under the control of Otumba Fashaway. Three of us, namely, but do they do? That was a domestic, the special assistant to President Obasanjo yes. on domestic affairs. Yes. Paria Umar uh -huh. who also is a. Who was also domestic assistant to the VP. To the VP. And myself. Okay. We are the key actors that run this account. Hmm. The bank has its branch at uh, where you call Tofat House. I mean, in uh, Abuja. In Abuja. What's the name of the bank? Trans International Bank. Hmm. Well, it's one of the banks that has gone, gone, gone on. Gone on that, okay. Uh, that's the source of the money, anyway. And of course, on a regular basis. Uh, Let me, do you recall how many times you took gifts of this type to Bola Chief Ige before he was killed? Well, I cannot. Uh, recall that, right? I, I, I cannot. Uh, but you recall that the last gift the was, last one 50 million was 50 million. Naira. How did you take it there? Was it, oh, well, did bullion you put it in your pocket? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't. Uh, that you, couldn't you, have. you drove. In a bullion van? In a bullion van. In what? company of the, the bank, van. one of the bank officials. Do you know his name? Yes, I remember. Uh, it's a reverend gentleman now, uh, uh, Reverend Shegun Egunjobi. You, you saw Shegun Egunjobi, Egunjobi enter the bullion van, or <laughs> as a driver of the bullion van and the police follow us, you were also behind, and you took it to Bolaige's house. Yeah, we took it to Bolaige's house. I drove in my own car. Hmm. Wow. So, so that's the name of the bank there on the, on the screen. So shortly yes, after <laughs> you took the money to Bolaige, did you know the intention of the bribe, by the yeah. way? Yeah, the gift. Yes. We shouldn't call it bribe yet. Yes, yes, yes. I would confess I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. But I must tell you it has become a burden because on other occasions, there are similar incidents. Where and you took money yes, to and gifts to people. And thereafter, something happened. Hmm. Just briefly and quickly tell us those other occasions where you took money well, to gifts to people. Yeah, and something thank you. Happened. Thank you. Let me give you the, uh, the, the case of Chief Harry Marshall. I was on this similar errand, and I put, put can, a can, call. Can you look at the camera? Uh, I put a call through to. Chief Harry Marshall, he now gave me the address mm. of a bank, I mean of an hotel where he will, he, he will be waiting for me and the, the hotel room number. I took the money there. Do you remember the hotel? Yes, Agura Hotel, hmm. somewhere around the area 10. Hmm. And you remember the amount? Uh, no, okay. I cannot remember. Okay. But I, I will tell you this. Not too long from that time, or that point, I was assassinated. 
So yeah. you took, <laughs> I don't want to cut you short, but I just want to start navigating this so that people can understand. You took money to Bola again. Few weeks later, he was assassinated. Yes. And you took money to uh, uh, Harry Marshall in Agura Hotel, another gift. Was it in a bullion van as well? No, no, no. This was not in a bullion van. Okay. No, so, it was, so he said, meet me at Agura Hotel. Yes. Shortly after you delivered the gift, he too was assassinated. I'll take you back to some of the conversation we had before we came on air. You said that what you suspected was happening was that there was an Abacha killer squad that Chief Oba I mean, President Obasanjo met when he came to the office. Even though he was disbanding everything Abacha did, he did not disband the killer squad. That is the strike force. Where was the strike force based? Yeah. Um the strike force, there are principal actors in them that stays permanently at where uh, uh, at the headquarters of the SSS, the State Department. That's the State Security, the, the yes. Department of State, State Security, Security in Nigeria. No, that's call it State. Yellow House. Yes. They stay there Yellow permanently. House. Wow. Yeah. After, that was after Obasanjo took over power. That was after Obasanjo took over. And, and of course, they were, they were star witness. Yes. On the part of the state. Wow. For, I mean, uh, in uh, Kudirat's uh, trial. Hmm. Kudirat's Abiola trial. So one of these guys was part of people that acted on behalf of the state. Yeah, when, yeah. two of uh, them. I remember. When Mustafa was being tried. For yeah, I remember. Of, uh, Sergeant Roger, I remember Kato, uh, Kato, uh, Kata, Katako. Katako. Up to, up till now. What happens to them, where they are, and uh, their confession, if you put it side by side, you'll be wondering what kind of system are we running? Why are they not, why is, there, why, why, why is some of this intruded in secret? Why do we not run a transparent uh, uh, system? Are yes. Those were yes. are some of the points that I put together as a man who have been in that system, and there was a serious burden on me. Hmm. Be before we continue with you, I want to go to Prince Shegun Seriki, who is your colleague in this yeah. new initiative to actually reveal and make sure that an end is put to this kind of impunity. This is what you said led you to partner with uh, Mr. Dusonya in this case. Uh, you also were around, but did you know some of these things were happening because we've seen photographs of you being part of uh, the background, seeing you with Vice President Atiku, and you've been in some of the events and parties that was happening. Did you know at that time that some of these things were happening? Uh, thank you, Omoyede. I had always been a political practitioner. I am a politician. And my interest in politics derives from desire, my interest in politics derives from desire to run a free and fair society. I could have been conversant with their system, but I'd encourage Richard because as a nation, we have to face the reality of the requirements of development. As a nation, we have to appreciate that we have to have respect for human values. As a nation, we have to understand that we will be run by rules. And the, the, the highest leadership can be quit on a society is respect of the rule of law, devoid of arbitrariness and self aggrandizement that, 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 that constituted and characterized the, the, the reign of General Basujo. Uh, I was at Ife when Shibolaide was governor. It was actually one of the gladiators that informed people like us involvement in politics. The issue of Shibolaide could be put in this clear perspective. This is a sitting attorney general of the Federal Republic who came from a party that was not at the center. 
That and is the, the AD. alliance for democracy. And there was a president who lost woefully in his area of primordial upbringing. Yeah. In criminology, you want to define intention. The intention for killing Bolaige can be put at the doorstep of Brazil because he shows overnight to get what he doesn't know have. And when he was now corroborating to me that there were actually efforts to bribe Shibolaige, and now one now realizes that the intention was real. And before all this bribery saga, the, the, a lot of things are already in public domain that we just need to piece together and let our country have a date with destiny. I, I, I would stop you there. One of the things that people will ask us now in, in this show is, why now? Mm. Why did you wait and keep quiet for the last several years, almost 10, 15 years ago? Why are you coming out now? You know, are you being sponsored by some political interest to come out now as a way of whittling down Obasanjo's influence by telling this story? Or are you genuinely driven by the desire to stop the impunity that characterizes his regime? Now, I would still crave your indulgence to put in perspective the issue of these assassinations. Okay. But fundamentally, we as a people are intimidated into assuming that you need to be sponsored before you can do what is right. And it is one of the politics of the criminals that are in authority to intimidate and subdue genuineness. Between us and God, their genuine desire to see to the killing that was arbitrary. We are in, we are in America now. The respect to life is one of the issues that is making this country great. And when issues as bad as the Attorney General of the Federation happens like this, and we assume it is a non-issue or it is statue bar, it becomes ridiculous what kind of nation that we, are, we, we want to become. I, I want to go to uh, Mr. Adusson here. Yeah. Was, was there any time in the course of your work in the background uh, that you had suspicion or you could make inferences of people saying, look, this Bolaige will do something about him. Did you ever come across those kind of conversations in the course of working with that group, this unofficial, powerful underground group at the Defense House? Yes, let me put it this way. Uh, it might not be direct inference, but there were particularly the night uh, Bolaige was assassinated, the Bolaige of blessed memory. There were conversations, there were, there were telephone calls through the night that uh, are suggestive. Hmm. Like, go, tell us. For instance, Otuma Fashawe confided in me and said, by 3 a.m. that day, the then president, General Obasanjo, called him and said, the gate is down. Don't go to Ibadan. I mean, to me. So you're me, saying that Obasanjo called Otumba Fashawa yes, 3 a.m. and said, and it, said it is down. The gate is down. Don't go to Ibadan. Wow. I mean, when you say such thing, at, at, and at my level, I begin to look at it, and my conscience begin to prick me. And, and in, in, in the... Go ahead, go ahead. Can I even, yes. uh, a very short story. Yes. Omishori. Because became, I was going to ask that next, yes, no, how no, no, close no. he was to, no, to your group. No, he wasn't close. Okay. He, at, at best, maybe he had some little rapport with the then vice president. At okay. best. Okay. He got the ticket of the party from prison. While he was awaiting trial. While he was undergoing trial, yes, it didn't stop there. He won the election there 
well, they call it landmark, the same senatorial constituency of Tifigi. One day I'll tell you this short I story. I was in the perspective. I was in the I was in the where I mean the, 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 there's a particular <coughs> building directly of Posey, the president residence. They call, it's called the glass house. I was with the children of President of Obasanjo, okay. and they were wondering aloud that what sort of country is this that a man in the prison will become a senator? I was looking at them that little did these boys, young men, know that their father oh. is involved in this charade. Amodu Ali and Ojoma Dweke could, couldn't have issued that ticket on their own. They have the backing of the, backing the, of the president. And I make bold to say that, that Amodu Ali, who was the PDP chairman at that and time, and Ojoma Dweke who was couldn't secretary. have done it on, uh, uh, on their own. You wanted own. to chip in? Yeah. Please. Now, you see, the issue is this. In as much as fairness is fair, there are enough facts to give president, former president of Asojo, the opportunity to hand is much flaunted credential of probity and uh, anti-corruption. Yes. The scenario is intimidating. If a sitting president is blackmailed into breaking the rules of the land, which requires every political uh, uh, aspiration to fill a form, go to the courts, and swear an affidavit, which I know they wouldn't have done in the, in the, in the prison. prison. Yeah. You see, one now wonders, a priori, why maintain a killer squad that you are condemning Abasha to have done? What purpose would they have for you? Well, let, let's... Two, yes, go ahead. what could have given Omishore the rapport that will enable him to have the Senate seat from, from prison? prison. So I won't say all this, when you now just oppose the efforts at bribing the old man. I think if this is an opportunity for the National Assembly to invoke their constitutional investigative powers to want to know what happened. Yes. And I, when I, you I now see the sources that you, of you money, actually have sent you know, a petition, if somebody can look at this, to the National Assembly to investigate this before yes. you came on this show. Yeah. Uh, and you got a response on 8 April, and the title of the petition was Preventing the Occurrence of the Inglorious Past. Past. Go ahead. Because that's my own concern as a Nigerian, as a political practitioner. I've been in the Federal House now going to about 30 years. That was the time you 20, were yeah, there. 20 something years. Yes. But the issue is, it has not been one failing to win election. It has been election don't hold in Nigeria. It has not been one, one not wanting to work in government. It has been a bad arbitrary government. Government of self aggrandizement government of ego. So those are issues that I, I thought the Senate and the House of Rep would take the opportunity and be the champion of the cause of the people. But that is not to say the, the, the IG who was copied and the attorney general whose predecessor was mercilessly murdered should not show interest. In, in, invariably, it is an indirect request on the president to look into the actions that will make him more running a more responsive government for the people of Nigeria. Well, let me hold up there, and I want to take a very short break. Uh, so when we come back, we continue with this uh, conversation. Uh, just don't go away. <laughs> 